Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope your day is going really well. I'm in Luminar 4 and I'm playing with the fog filter today. I had a photo that was uh, I shot in the fog, but um, I remember the fog being thicker than it was. And the thing with fog is it's kind of hard to photograph except in the distance, right? Because when you're close to it, unless it's like really soupy and thick, it's kind of hard to, uh, I guess, capture, right? So I've got a scene that um, started out in real life kind of foggy, but the photo wasn't super foggy. So what I wanted to do is enhance the look of the fog in the photo. So that's what we're gonna do today. Now, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so, just smack it down there. It's the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Let YouTube know that you like what I'm creating. And don't hesitate to share this video. And of course, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about it. So let's hop into it. Here we go, I've already cropped the photo. That's the base unedited raw file. And you can see it's kind of foggy, especially in the distance, right? You can see a little bit more in the foreground, but it was a nice little scene. It was like over Thanksgiving a number of years ago. Anyway, uh, nice color contrast, I think, with the bright foggy sky and then these kind of orangey grasses and some of that green. But um, it didn't translate as well when I made the photo. So I thought, I'm like, I want to go see what I can do in Luminar. And that's what I turned it into. I amped up the fog quite a bit. I added some drama and that sort of thing. So I'm going to reset these filters and we're gonna go through it. Okay, here we go. This is my base unedited photo. I'm gonna start in the light tool. And what I wanna do is give it a little bit of contrast. So I'm gonna go smart contrast of about 40. I like the look of contrast. I'm gonna take the shadows down a little bit, something like negative 18. Even though I'm trying to create a fog look, I still wanna have some contrast in the photo and pulling down the shadows is gonna help. Now I'm gonna pop over to AI accent right here and give that a little bump to about 20. That somewhat come, overcomes what I just did with the shadows, but I still think it looks fine. And here's my before and after those tool, uh, those two tools. And now we're gonna jump into the fog part. Okay, fog is over here on the creative tab and it's at the bottom. Now, the thing about fog is in the past, when I've, there's two kinds, let me start with that. There's light fog and dark fog. Dark fog. Um, there's um, just a simple slider. So you just drag it and it goes like that. The thing is, is if you notice, especially with light fog, I mean, it basically looks like you're just getting an obscured photo with a white, um, like a low opacity white sheet being uh, painted over it effectively. That doesn't look like fog to me. That looks like a white sheet kind of going over my photo. So I didn't really like that. So then I was like, well, let me try dark fog. That's a little bit better because it's not quite as bright. It's the dark fog, not the light fog. But still, it's like I wanted to amp up the fog and the more I drag it, I just wasn't happy with it. So you could go in and say, well, I'm just gonna brush mask it into certain areas. And that absolutely works. You could change the opacity of your brush paint it in, do whatever you like. But what I did is I went and built a luminosity mask for it. And there's a luminosity mask. And in fact, I, I used dark fog and I went to like 48 or something. And the reason a luminosity mask works in my opinion is because a luminosity mask by definition is applying that filter or tool to the brighter parts of the image. The brighter parts of the image, of course, are um, where you see the fog mostly, right? So I think it works there. Let me show you what a luminosity mask looks like. And if you need a video about them, there's a link there, but basically it's an auto mask. It gets created automatically by Luminar, applied more heavily to the bright parts of the image and less heavily to the dark parts of the image. That's what it looks like. I think it looks fine. I didn't make any adjustments to it. I just left it like that. And I was already kind of happy. I was like, you know, here's my before unedited photo. Here's my current state. It looks a little foggier, but you know, I'm, I'm just twitchy and I, I can't really be happy with it. So I'm like, there's gotta be more I can do. And then I thought, you know what, there's another tool that works pretty well in terms of adding kind of some brighter, kind of mystical light. And I'm not talking about mystical, I'm talking about glow. So I'm gonna click on glow, and you've got three choices here, soft focus bright, soft focus, and soft glow. I'm gonna stay on soft focus bright, and I'm gonna bump that up to like 32. And look what that does to the photo. So here's the before, and here's the after. It actually feels like it gives it a tiny bit of contrast, but mostly, it gives it a bump to the bright parts It's and a soft focus. And what do you get in fog? It's kind of an obscured view, so the focus is softer. So it kind of makes sense to me. So one more time, there's before soft focus bright, which is in the glow tool, and after, and that's at uh, 31, 32. Um, you know, season to taste, right? So you could just drag this real crazy if you wanted to, but I think I was around 32 in this example photo. Now, I was pretty happy. Once again, here's the before and the after or current state, but I wanted to do a few more things. And as I said, I'm a little twitchy, so I'm not really ever satisfied. 
I wanted to do a couple things. So I actually went over to the Pro Tool and I got adjustable gradient. So here I went in and added some contrast to the top. I went at about 30, 31. And then I also added some contrast to the bottom of about 23. Something like about like that. I like a little bit of contrast in the image. I just think it looks nice. So that's why I wanted to use that. And there's the before and the after for that tool. However, one of the great things about adjustable gradient is you can also adjust shadows. So in this case, I lifted the shadows to about 26. That's gonna bring a little bit more light and less shadow and more light is gonna make it look like there's more fog there. It's gonna be less dark. And then I went back to top and I did the same thing with shadows. I lifted that to about 51 and that really kind of brightened up the top of the image. And the way I look at it is the top of the image, especially over here in the right hand corner and kind of heading across to the trees and through this, uh, this further patch of water, uh, they're brighter now and I just think they look better. So let me show you adjustable gradient before. Kind of flatter, right? Less contrast, of course, but also a little bit darker. And after, a little bit brighter, a little foggier, and yet still a little bit more contrast. So it kind of worked well for me. But once again, I wanted to keep experimenting. I wasn't quite done. So I was like, what else can I do? So I went over to the Portrait tab, and I clicked on High Key. Now, High Key is not really something I would use on a landscape. It's used often in fashion photography and things like that. But what it does is effectively creates like a really... Um, bright part and a really dark part, so it's a really high contrast sort of thing. It kind of worked well here. So I started out with a mount. I went to like 40 or so, 41, and you can kind of see what it's doing. I bumped up the standard high key to like 64, and again, this was all experimentation. I was just moving sliders until I found what I wanted. I went dynamic high key. I went to about 70 there, and then I took the glow and I bumped it up to something like 67. Um, and glow is, as the name implies, is kind of making it glow. If you, if you take the glow down, you can kind of see the difference. So I was up here like 67 or so. And let me show you before high key. There it is before and after high key. You can see it's a little bit more contrasty. Um, it's a little bit brighter in the foggy parts of the image, but I think it's working for me, but I got one more thing I want to do. And that was popping over here to Orton, one of my favorite tools, and I just felt like it really came in handy here. So Orton's got a couple of choices. You've got type one and type two. And in this case, I went with type two, let me hit that. And I went to like mid sixties, and that was really just a mood. Um, more than anything, it was a mood, and I just kind of liked it because Orton kind of fogs up an image. It makes it a little bit soft, and think about it, if you're shooting in fog, you're probably not gonna see really crisp detail all over the photo because it's foggy, right? So I think Orton played well in this case, and I, I like to use it on landscapes anyway. Orton effect, there's before, right? Um, a little bit crispier, a little bit crunchier, a little bit more detail, and some of that crunchiness uh, is because of the, uh, the way high key uh, looks on the photo. But coming in now at the end with Orton, soften it up, gives a little bit of a romantic glow, and I think heightens the look of the overall fog effect in the photo. So now if I show you before and after, there's my base photo, much better visibility through the photo. You can tell that it's foggy, but it's kind of distant. It's kind of thin, I guess. is You know, it's not very prevalent in the photo, but you're like, oh, kind of foggy. I kind of wish it was more foggy and a little bit more colorful, a little bit more dramatic. Hey, there's a little bit more colorful and dramatic. Now you could also go back over here and do a little bit with color if you wanted to. Perhaps you go into the color slider and maybe do a little bit of vibrance. And I might would even go into landscape enhancer and give it a little bit of golden hour simply because that's kind of warming up some of those uh, orangey kind of red grasses there in the distance and stuff uh, like down here that, uh, along this kind of creep bed. Totally optional, of course, and frankly, every photo is different. But these were some things I walked through to kind of uh, to figure out a way to enhance my fog photos. So to go back and summarize that, it was uh, fog, of course, but applied with a luminosity mask. It was glow using soft focus bright. And then over here on portrait, I used high key and Orton. And I think those tools, fog was an obvious one, but I think using soft focus bright and the glow tool plus high key and Orton really gave me that added oomph that I was looking for. There's a before and after. And if you want to see the sliding uh, window here to see the difference, very different. And I, th I think much more foggy and moody. And when I think of foggy landscape photos, sort of by definition, I'm thinking they're kind of moody and they're kind of dramatic. And I think it fit the scene. So that's how I go about enhancing fog photos. Admittedly, I don't get to shoot them a lot because it's not like you can plan it. You have no idea when it's going to be foggy. But if you get a chance, shoot some fog, 
go try some of these tricks. I hope it helps you, my friends. Thank you for watching. As I said before, please uh, give me a uh, thumbs up. Give me a comment. Let me know what you think. Hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you soon, my friends. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Take care, and adios.